That's some serious big tip energy. Hi, and thanks for joining me. If you run vintage or minis like me, you might not run LiPo battery packs. It might be that you run NIM batteries. Now these might just come as a stick pack wrapped in heat shrink with a connector on the end of it. And they're all well and good. But I remember back in the day, we used to have NIM batteries side by side, soldered together with a connector on the end of them. It got me thinking, maybe I should try it with the mini. So today we're going to make our own battery packs. So a couple of things that you do need. Obviously, you need your own cells. So rather than the big pack that come pre-made, we've got individual cells. These are LRP 4000 Hyper Pack cells. You can get these from a number of places, but I got mine from Inside Line Models, and I'll leave a link in the description for them. Now, if you run NIM cells, let me know what class you run these in. Is it mini? Is it vintage? Is it something else? Now, obviously, a single cell isn't enough for a battery pack. We're going to need a few more. Much better. Now we've got our cells. There are a couple of other things that we need. We're going to need to attach these cells or connect them together. I've got some Orion battery bars. Now these, these are so hard to get hold of. I actually had to place an order and these came from Germany. There are others available. I think Mardave might sell battery bars on their website. But we place the order. Got a pack of battery bars, Team Orion, Bones battery bars in copper, ready to make this pack. Now you're gonna need something to keep the batteries together so you don't put strain on the battery bars if you have that unfortunate accident. Now you can use something like super glue or some silicone. We're also gonna need some flux, which helps when we tin our wires or our battery bars I got this from Screwfix, you can get it from a DIY shop or anywhere like that. And also, some solder. Now I've got this tin solder from Hoodie. Now a lot of the solders that I were looking at were lead free. And after speaking to numerous people online, they said that the way to go is 60-40 solder. Now before taking on this project, I decided to speak to a few people. So anyone that helped on the Batcave mini group um, in answering my question about solder and these battery packs, thank you so much. Big shout out to you guys, um, including Mark Styles, Remo, uh, Chris as well. People pointing me in the right direction. Uh, there's so many people to name, but thank you all. I really do, really appreciate you. So this is what we had. This was my soldering iron. It was 10 quid from the local DIY store. Now, as you can see, 25 watts. This, no good. If you look at the tip, too thin, no good. Load of rubbish, don't need it, get rid of that. Okay, so what are we gonna use instead? Basically, we need a soldering iron that is above 60 watts, and it also needs a wide tip, big tip, so we can get some thermal mass without heating them up too much and damaging the cells. See, all these people that helped me sound like I know what I'm talking about now. So after listening to everyone's advice about needing a big soldering iron with a big tip, at least 60 watts, this is what we have. It is a Weller soldering iron, which I bought on Amazon with a 10, millimeter wide tip on there also additionally to help the process a little bit i made this little jig so our cells can sit in there while we do any soldering keeps them a bit more together we've got all our bits let's plug the soldering iron in let's see how we do it so while the soldering iron's heating up, we're just gonna glue these packs together. It doesn't need a lot of super glue, it's just to hold it in place. We wanna make sure that we alternate polarity on the cells. So we don't have them all stood up with positive at the top. We need a positive, 
next to a negative, so a positive there, a negative there, which will create our circuit. So obviously they will alternate. Now I'm a little bit of a stiffler, so I want all of mine point in with the 4,000, okay? Ooh, that's the wrong way around. I've got my batteries alternating, so I've got positive, negative, positive, negative, and our bars will set on top of there. For when I glue them together, all I'm gonna do is lay them on the side. I'm just gonna take these cells and I'm gonna push them up against a flat surface. We're literally just gonna put a little bit of super glue to keep the battery pack together. Later on, we will go over it and reinforce it with a bit of the silicone. I'm gonna take our glue. Doesn't need tons. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this board and I'm gonna use the edge of this board, I think. You're not gonna be able to see for a minute, but we're just literally gonna pop these cells together like that. Wait for the glue to dry. So while the glue's curing on the batteries to keep them together, just got myself a little sponge. It's a little bit damp. It's not soaking wet or anything like that. And that is just to clean the tip of our soldering iron, just to make sure it's nice and clean, ready for action. Once the glue's cured, I'm gonna take my jig again. I'm gonna pop my batteries in there. So as you can see, they all sit in there nicely. So to solder these packs together, we need three battery bars, okay? On this side, we're gonna do the positive and negative here and the positive and negative here, and then we'll flip them over. And on the middle two batteries, on the opposite side, we'll do the third and final bar. So take your Orion battery bars, or whichever ones you've got. We're gonna need one, two, and three of them. We're gonna take our flux. <coughs> Just a little bit of flux on the end of these terminals. So the idea now is to be as quick as possible, preventing any excess heat from going into the battery. bars on top first one these will get very hot very quick you can hold it with a pair of pliers position where you want the bar a little bit of heat brush give it a blow or you could touch it with the cloth that you've got I'm just going to spin this around same again nice and quick One bar. Again, place your bar. Spin it round so I can get to this one. Now they shouldn't be too hot if we've done them quick enough. And that's what we've got. Let's take these out. Spin them round. Now that the battery bars are in place, we just need to add a connector. So I've gone with the Dean's connector and then just make sure your positive and negative wires are going to the right cells. Now I don't claim to be no expert, but we've got a battery pack made there pretty quickly. Needs charging. Soldering might need improving slightly, but it's my first go at that. If you've got any tips for me, leave them down below. Now you may wonder 
why have I gone to the effort to make my own battery pack? What, what's the actual benefits of them? So there are a couple of benefits. These now will sit lower in my car because they'll fit into the slots where the battery tray is. It also means if I want to equalize my cells, I can do that using a discharge tray. The discharge tray basically discharges each cell individually rather than the pack as a whole. For the final step, we're just gonna pop a bead of silicone sealant between each cell and with a wet finger, just wipe it down between the cells. If you've not got a jig, you could do this right at the beginning of the process. That way, your cells will be together before you attach the battery bars, which might make it slightly easier. All that's left to do is get this battery pack on charge. Guys, if you like the content you're seeing, take a look at this video and I'll see you over there.